Well, good day viewers and uh, almost Merry Christmas. We've got a 2014 Chevy Silverado. Looks like a 1500 4x4 crew cab. And it's here for a number of electrical anomalies. Here's what the customer reported to me just a few minutes ago. He says, sometimes when he's turning the wheel, the instrument cluster will shut off. The radio will randomly shut off. Uh, he said the vehicle has stalled on a couple of occasions and it usually occurs when he's turning the wheel. He's also noted that the driver's side window would randomly roll down by itself. So I asked him if he'd seen the movie Christine and this may be a Christine wannabe. And we're starting to see weird electrical anomalies so I haven't scanned this yet. There's no warning lights on now but I'm going to scan it do a network. Uh, code scan to see what kind of codes it has to offer and we'll go from there. This should be interesting. So I couldn't find a record on this vehicle. I have worked for this company before but I don't believe I've worked on this vehicle in the manner where I needed to scan it anyways. So we're doing auto ID. It's got 106,000 kilometers. 2014 Silverado 4.3. V6. Wow. Let's do a network code scan. No codes in the engine, transmission, ABS, airbag. Lost communication with electronic brake control module. Lost communication with device on the LIN bus. Media-oriented uh, signal transmission bus performance. Low voltage code on the HVAC. Steering wheel angle sensor data plausibility failure. Radio codes, audio output circuit open. Left front, right front. It's got some broken wires in the door. Left rear, right rear. Full module power circuit, low voltage, lost communication with HVAC, lost communication with device on wind bus. Hmm. All the maintenance monitors, well the catalyst monitor is not complete so the battery has been recently disconnected or the code has been recently cleared. So no, uh, no significant help here other than maybe a bad network problem but definitely no codes in the ECM ECM and transmission computer hmm. I think we're going to explore some body grounds have a look at those I apologize for my furnace running but it is winter I'm going to do a network code clear I did a visual inspection of the battery ground cable and looks decent and the positive feed stud looks decent. So I'm just going to clear all the codes out of it. And then we're going to do a post scan just to see if anything did come back. up on the hoist and have a look at the uh, ground on the body. I think there's a ground on the frame rail on the right hand side between the engine and the frame and the body but I'm not 100% certain on that. So we got the vehicle up in the air and the ground that I was concerned about is behind the right front wheel, this one right here. On some of the trucks I think they used to use a braided ground strap. Now this doesn't look bad. 
but it could be oxidized underneath here. So I'm going to take this off and clean it. I'm thinking when you're turning, of course, the load of the electric power steering rack stresses that ground. But I haven't experienced any problem. So I'm going to clean this ground. There's also a ground on the frame on this side. But that's mainly for the ABS. That looks a little rusty too. We're going to take that one off and clean that one and seal it up. And then we'll take it for a road test and see if it acts up. So I removed both these frame grounds and cleaned them. I think I'm going to replace the negative cable end and put eyelets at the negative cable and clean the positive terminals on the power distribution center as well. But unfortunately we're not going to know. I'm going to drive this vehicle maybe for a couple of days here over the Christmas break and see if it acts up. So I've taken apart all the cable ends here and cleaned them, the terminals, and sealed them with uh, battery post sealant or high tack gasket spray. I was going to change the, the ground terminal, but it looks absolutely pristine, and I'm uh, concerned that the cables might be a little bit short if I replace it with one of these uh, marine lug style cable ends. Plus. It's hard to tighten this up properly. I'd have to change the nut around the other way, I think. But I think we're going to, again, clear all codes, reset all the computers, and drive it and see what happens. So I'm back from about a 10-kilometer road test with thing, this truck, and I uh, didn't experience any anomalies, but I thought I'd do a follow-up network code scan. And I got a low-voltage code in history in the HVAC module and a low voltage code in the radio. Let's go into the HVAC module and see what the voltage is. Now we had those codes before and I assumed it could be because of a bad ground. Now again, I didn't experience any problem with the heater controls or the radio or anything like that. Battery voltage is 14.5. Let's see what happens when we're cranking it. Turn the key off and back on again. It's 13 volts. Wow, it dropped as low as 8.6 during that cranking event. Let's try that again. That time was pretty good, but it recorded a low voltage of 8.6, and I believe that low voltage code sets below 9 volts. one that time. That's interesting. Let's clear the code out of the HVAC controller. And see if it resets on a key on a startup. Make sure the code is gone. No codes present. Let's go into data. Build a custom data list with just battery voltage. Graph it. That'll make it faster to refresh. So this is the battery voltage on the right side here. 13.3. Key on. That time it went as low as 10.5. I'm going to put it in clear flood mode. That'll crank longer. And this doesn't have clear flood mode. Hit 9.7 that time. Let's try that again. Doesn't have clear flood mode. That's where you hold your foot to the floor on the gas pedal and it should crank and not fire.
Let's see if it reset that fault code. No, it didn't. I'm gonna play around a bit. So I'm back in the shop and I've got the key on, engine not running. I turned the headlights on to deplete the battery a little bit just to see how low the voltage would go. It's 12.1 right now. Let's try starting it. Went to 9.7. It hasn't reset that code. I'm not sure what the criteria is for setting that B1325 code. chasing a ghost here. So I did a keyword search for that B1325 code and I came across a TSB and it says steering jerks or kicks back, reduce power steering assist, engine stall, no start, server stability track, instrument cluster, radio and HVAC go blank, various DTCs set. Basically it's talking about some customers may comment on one or more of the following conditions of release or loss of power steering assist. Steering wheel jerks or kicks back when turning. Service stability track message went with warning chime engine stall. IPCs going blank or inoperative. Radio instrument cluster display goes blank. HVAC goes blank. Eight hooded jar message. Alarm. Wipers continue to run. And that 1325 code is is common caused by battery cables with high resistance and are loose connections at the positive or negative battery cables battery fuse block by a poor BCM ground at G218 let's find out where G218 is 218 is shorted B plus battery cable at the starter solenoid caused by a loose starter shield Starter shield contacting the starter battery cable terminal ring. Discharge or faulty battery. Well, the battery is fairly new. Well, we've cleaned a couple of the grounds and we cleaned the battery cables. I don't think there's a problem with that negative battery cable, but I have seen issues with it. Inspect for high resistance and or loose connections at both the battery fuse block and the positive and negative battery cables. Well, I didn't look at the starter just to see if the, the uh, shield was rusted off and laying on the battery cable, but I'm going to do that. So here's an identical case history on Identifix. Customer concern was the instrument panel cluster stops working, the engine stalls, intermittent code B1325 stored in radio and the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning module. Basically, it says to perform tests as per that TSB. So we're going to find out where G218 is. It's obviously under the dash someplace. Component locations. B218. That's the component list. Because I did not check that ground. Yeah. What happened to G218? Hmm. Control F. G218. In the passenger compartment under the left front instrument panel defroster deflector near the right A pillar. That's a good picture. Uh, that's the right A pillar. That's the right side of the dash. Okay, we're going to have a look in there. 
So according to the pictures, that ground is up top here, and there's no way to get at it that I can see. I've taken the lower glove box off, the upper glove box off, and I'm looking in here, looking for it, and I can't see it reasonably. But I do see that the cabin air filter is in dire need of replacement. You gotta take the glove box out to get at it, so I'm gonna get one of these right in the next day or so. So I finally found G218. It is right underneath the speaker down here. You have to take the cowl off. Let's see, there it is there. Hoping I can get at it with that speaker removed. Not the cowl. Uh, take the A-pillar moldings off and then the center trim molding off the defroster grill. And I'm going to take this speaker out and see if we can access that ground. So there's that pesky ground. I can't see there being a problem with it, but I'm going to take it apart and clean it just the same. So I got the grounds off and cleaned. I'm going to put them back on again. So I'm putting this back together and I just wanted to note that there's a splice pack down by the bottom of the right A pillar down here. That's serial data splice pack by the looks of it. All the same color wires in there. And the OnStar module lives up above there. Yeah, we got this mostly back together again. I'm going to drive into town to pick up that cabin air filter. So I repeated that same test. And one time it did drop to 10 volts, but most of the time it was like 10 and a half. That's a lot better than less than, uh, I think it was 8.7 it dropped to at one point on the previous recording. So I'm going to drive it into town to pick up that cabin air filter and we're going to take the scanner with us see what happens. So it set the B1325 code before I even left the shop. I checked to see if there was any codes in there. I had cleared the codes after uh, reconnecting everything, cleaning that ground on the dash. So I've cut off this uh, battery cable end. Even though it doesn't look bad, I've had them fail in the past. And I've added two copper lugs and a marine stud. I'm going to bolt them on and see if it makes any difference. Well, it's back together. Cleared all the codes. Got started a couple times and see what happens to the voltage. So I'm going to shut it off and, and start it a couple times. It dropped as low as 10.4 there. So that made a little bit of a difference, I think. So let's see if it said any 1325 codes in the HVAC. No codes. Okay, well, I'm going to take this thing for a road test into town. So we're back from town with the cabin filter. Approximately 75 kilometer round trip, about an hour there and back. And no anomalies. No warning lights, no messages, no blinking lights. So we're gonna scan it one more time. So we'll do one more code scan here. See if there's any codes in any of the controllers. Engine, transmission, airbag, manual lock brakes, body control. OnStar. HVAC, HVAC controls, instrument cluster, passenger presence system, radio, radio controls. It was in the HVAC and radio controls that we had that B1325, I think it was. So that's good. We still haven't run all the maintenance monitors, but that's besides the point. 
So we really don't know what fixed this thing. I'm going to put that uh, cabin filter in and put this dash back together again and give it back to the customer and hope for the best. Thanks for watching. So what do you think? Was that cabin filter a little dirty? thing weighs like two pounds. It's full of sand. Uh, use the box that the cabin filter came with and uh, cut a piece out of it and slide that underneath the cabin filter that's in there before you pull it out otherwise all these leaves and stuff will fall down on top of the fall down into the heater so slide this underneath inside the air filter housing or inside the housing and then slide the cat slide the cabin filter out and catch all the leaves